This is the monologue uh, number 42. We're going to start off talking about the Hegelian dialectic in comparison to the Gospel, or the Hegelian dialectic in correlation with the Gospel. Of course, we have step one, the, the thesis, step two, the antithesis, and step three, the synthesis. And if you actually want to equate this with the Gospel, you could actually go with the idea that typically whenever we're discussing the Hegelian dialectic, it, the, the thesis is based on creating a problem, creating some type of hypothetical problem. And then the antithesis is to generate opposition to the problem, i.e. fear, panic, or hysteria. And then of course the synthesis is to offer the um, solution to the problem based on step one, based on the thesis. So if you want to correlate this with the gospel, you can look at it like this. The thesis is that we're all sinners. We've inherited um, Adam's genetic disposition, and he has passed sin upon all, all people. And because of sin, we have death, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, because of this death, because of sin, we have um, opposition to the problem. We have fear. We have panic. We have hysteria. We have anxiety. We have, you know, nervousness. We have worryment. We have dread. We have um, apprehension because of hell and condemnation. And the hell and condemnation is there because of sin. So that's the antithesis. Now, to synthesize everything is we come up with a solution based on step one. Well, the fact that we are sinners, well, Jesus Christ came on to this earth, he was sent from God to this earth to take upon himself the sins of the whole world. And so the solution is he died for our sins so that we could have eternal life and that we could be saved from hell. So that's what we have here is basically the Hegelian dialectic in correlation with the gospel. You can actually look at it in the same regard. Now you can also look at it like this. The gospel message or the whole Bible message is basically starts off at three phases. We have what's called a setup, then we have an upset, and then we have a reset. God set up the Garden of Eden. He set up the, the human race to be perfect. But Adam and Eve sinned, and that basically took the perfect setup, and it upset the setup. Now, to take care of this upset, or to reset, we have Jesus Christ who came to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He was buried and rose again. That's what reset everything, and now people can be redeemed by his blood. So we have a, 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 we have a setup, upset, and reset in the gospel message too. The problem is sin. Because of sin, we have condemnation and hell. But the solution is Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins so, so that we can be saved by simply believing on him. As it says in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Acts 16, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. So we can look at the, the, the principles of the upset, set up, excuse me, the set up, upset, and reset, and we could also correlate this whole gospel message uh, with the um, Hegelian dialectic. That's all I have. Thank you, and we are off. So one thing I want to add to basically placate the argumentation given by the typical atheistic or scientific or anti-theistic or agnostic skeptic out there that wants to say that, well, this 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 philosophical this philosophical idea of the Hegelian dialectic. It makes is trying to explain the Bible, but yet the reason why the Bible account of the gospel is inherently, you know, correlative in this whole theory is because it, it proves that the Bible is true. That's why you can find the concept of, you know, the gospel and the, the sin problem and, and and then the redemption. It's it's found in all all different types of uh, theories. So you can't say that the Hegelian dialectic opposes the Bible, but rather it supports it, because God is able to basically um, in, inseminate his truth in all different types of philosophies or in all different types of um, rational theories and whatnot. So yes, the Hegelian dialectic is actually in support of what the Bible says, as opposed to some type of a secular philosophy that just explains it in a different way. No, it explains it the correct way because 
God's truth is inherent in all things. That's why I wanted to add that as like an addendum to this little monologue because there are going to be skeptics out there that are going to say, well, this explains the why people believe the Christian message. And it's all going to be based on the Hegelian dialectic instead of based on the fact that the Bible already had this message in, you know, embedded in, into, you know, into its understanding uh, to begin with. Thank you. We are off.